Hey, Vanessa. Hey, Brian. What's up? Well, I actually had a question for you. You see, I was staring at my green marker, and I couldn't help but wonder what actually makes it green. You know, that's a great question. I know someone who can do a cool experiment to help us figure it out. Do you know my friend Abby? Oh yeah, Abby. She's super smart. Yeah, she is. Let's go to Abby so she can help us figure out what makes your marker green. Hi, Vanessa and Brian. That's a great question. I can help answer it with a really cool tool called chromatography. To see how it works, here's an experiment that you can try at home. Before you begin, remember it's important to have a lab partner with you when doing scientific experiments, so make sure you have a responsible adult to work with. Here's what you're going to need. Washable markers. I also have some water-based ink that I'm going to try coffee filters, glass of water, scissors, a paper towel, a pencil, and some tape. Use your scissors to cut your filter paper into strips about half an inch to an inch wide. It can be helpful to use your pencil to label each strip with a number so it's easy to keep track of which is which. On the other end of the strip, use your marker to draw a line about an inch from the bottom of the strip. I made myself a cheat sheet on another sheet of paper so I could keep track of which color went with each number. Next, tape your strip to your pencil so that it can sit in the glass with just the very end in the water. Make sure that the line you drew doesn't touch the water. Now watch as the water travels up the paper. Wait until the water has run most of the way up the strip, and then lay it on the paper towel to dry. Now it's time to make observations. What do you see? When I did it, I saw the color of my line separate into several different colors. Here, my green ink separated into lines of blue, green, and pink. This brown marker separated into lines of blue and brown. What we are observing here is chromatography. When the water soaks through the filter paper, it carries with it the molecules that give the ink its color, called pigments. Because some of these pigments are bigger than others, they move through the paper at different rates, causing them to separate. Using this tool, we can see that our markers, which look like they're only one color, 
are actually made up of several different pigments mixed together. Now that we've done our experiments, we can use what we've learned to ask new questions. I wonder if different brands of markers will give different results. Do brown markers always have blue pigment in them? And what happens if you try this with a permanent marker? You can be the scientist and discover it yourself. Wow, so this green marker has many different pigments in it. And if I do the paper chromatography experiment, I can figure out exactly what pigments in this marker actually make it green. Exactly. Isn't it cool how we can use science to answer questions and learn new things? It's the coolest! And in fact, Abby's experiment reminds me a lot of what I do in lab. Oh yeah? How so? Well, as a biochemist, I study the tiny building blocks that make up living things, just like you and me. Your body is made up of trillions of cells, each packed full of millions of these building blocks, or molecules, such as DNA, sugars, proteins, and fats. Studying all of these things together in one big soup is difficult, so instead I separate out just one molecule from the mix at a time to learn about its function. Using this information, I can start to piece together how an individual molecule helps an organism survive. In the lab, I do this by using chromatography, specifically with an instrument called an FPLC, which stands for Fast Protein Liquid Chromatography. Using the FPLC, I can take a mixture of the building block soup and flow it through the instrument. The FPLC then isolates the molecule I am interested in based on different properties, such as size or charge. This allows me to pick exactly the molecule I want to work with. Wow! So chromatography is an actual technique that scientists use in real experiments? Yep! Isn't science the best? It really is! Discovering yourself.